This short guide explains how to configure a new VESC 6 based brushless motor controller. I'm using the Vertile CFOCER available on the Vertile store. Links are in the description. Note that during testing, the motor controller can be run for short periods of time without a heatsink. However, when the motor controller is under load for sustained periods, like on this go-kart, a heatsink must be used. Further, the conductive pad on each MOSFET on the back of the motor controller needs to be electrically isolated. This means you should not place the board on a conductive surface while testing, and when you install a heatsink, be sure to use an electrically insulating material between the board and the heatsink. Also, while testing and using your new motor controller, avoid damaging the MOSFETs by never unplugging the motor while the controller is powered on. To get started, download the VESC tool and unzip it. Run the program and you'll see this screen. Plug in the USB cable and then the power, you can also plug in your motor. You can either solder wire leads to the power and motor ports, or these 4mm banana jacks work well. You can hit auto connect and wait, or simply wait for the connect button to appear on the right and press connect when the board is detected. If you see an error message saying the configuration cannot be deserialized, or the controller has test firmware, you need to flash an updated firmware image. To flash a new firmware image, go to the firmware tab, Click the small down arrow button. Click yes to clear the settings and wait for the firmware to update. Once the firmware update is done, don't unplug the power to the controller until the lights flash several times or after about 10 seconds. Don't worry though, you can't destroy the board by unplugging it early. However, you may need an ST-Link programming tool to flash the board if there is a problem. Next, let's configure the motor. Once you've updated the firmware, Plug the controller power back in and hit connect. Click the setup motors FOC button. Load the default parameters when prompted. Choose how you're going to use the motor and hit next. I'm going to set this up as a generic motor. Choose the correct motor size and hit next. I'm testing with a 6327 size motor, which has a Hall effect sensor. Choose your battery, hit next, and then run detection. Unchecking the box to detect all motors over the CAN bus will make the process faster. Accept the detection results. And test your motor using the forward and reverse buttons, inverting the direction if necessary. Finally, let's configure an input device. I'm using a simple RC servo tester as my input device. It outputs a PPM signal just like an RC receiver would. On the PPM mapping page, move your throttle to the minimum and the maximum value, and then back to the middle, and hit next. Choose your control type, I'll use the default current no reverse with brake, and hit next. Hit finish, and now you're ready to test out your new motor controller.